Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Flower Plant System Engineering Module 2 that is Vapor Power System Part 1. So, in this lecture we are going to cover the following topics. So, in our previous lecture we covered about the Rankine cycle. Here we will see that how performance enhancement can be done for a Rankine cycles. Under this segment, we have three important cycles for vapor power systems. One is superheat cycle, other is reheat cycle, third one is regenerative cycles. More elaborate mathematical modeling and thermodynamic analysis will be covered in these lectures. So, let us see first thing is that why there is a necessity for enhancing the performance of a Rankine cycle. So, first of all when you dealt with the Rankine cycle, an ideal Rankine cycle, we say that saturated steam at state 1 expands in the turbine. So, through this process and during this expansion process, we land off at the end of at the exit of the turbine, the steam quality to be not par with respect to uh, operating requirement for the turbine. In general, turbine blades are designed to operate the steam in vapor state. But if the quantity of water vapors or quality of the steam is not adequate, then it, it normally erodes the turbine blades. For that reasons, the turbine blade degrades. Now, when it degrades to overcome this problem, what we thought of is that uh, steam quality is retained uh, at least 90 percent in the turbine exit. So, if you want to retain the steam quality of the turbine exit that is state 2 or 2 double dash, then we must push this fellow that means in state in inlet state to somewhere in this domain. That means, one should be pushed off to the superheated region. And when we say it is a superheated region, so thereby what uh, advantage we get is that after expansion the quality of the steam always remains in the vapor regions. That is one aspect. Second aspect that when you do the superheating, we are actually going for the mean temperature of heat additions for the fluid. Through this process, you have the higher work output because uh, another important aspect is that when you go to the superheated regions, this due to the uh, divergence of the constant pressure line, this difference that is delta H becomes progressively higher if you handle the steam in the superheated regions. And here two things get is gets we are gets ensured through the superheating, one is um, higher uh, expansion work in the turbine, second is quality of the steam becomes at least more than 90 percent. The other method of increasing the thermal efficiency of vapor plant is uh, providing a regenerative feed water heating or regeneration. So, this uh, thermal circuit diagram we will uh, we'll revisit uh, subsequently, but here through this regeneration uh, what we we'll essentially do is that the if you consider the ideal cycle that is 1, 2, 3, 4, A and 1 and another or either you can say 1 dash, 2 dash, 2, 3, 4, A and 1 dash. In any of the cases, what we actually do in the regenerative system is that we take some fluids, you take some fluids outside of during the expansion process, you take some fluid out, out and suppose uh, during this expansion process from 1 to 2, 1 unit of fluid is entering and you take tap y amount of fluid or steam through another process. So, that is what we call as a feed water heating system and rest of the things you, uh, you we expand in the turbines. So, through that process what actually goes into the boiler is that a, a thermodynamic states which is 4 A which is in between the state 4 and uh, state A. 
So, through this regenerative um, methods, we are actually uh, increasing the mean temperature of heat additions. In fact, this is more logical in many of the senses because most of the times the, we have exhaust streams coming out various locations in the power plant and those exhaust streams can be tapped to uh, do this kind of heating systems. So, uh, this is uh, this particular method we call as feed water heating systems or regenerations. I, it can be an open system or it can be a closed water feed water heater. Then for let us first see uh, the first important modification that we do in the Rankine cycle which is superheat cycle. We already mentioned that quality of the stream at the turbine exit should be at at least 90 percent. How we need to do the superheating arrangement is like this, you are uh, in a conventional cycle which is 1, 2, 3, 4, A and 1, it operates at a state when the steam is at saturated vapor. Now, through this superheating process what it says is that once we uh, once we reach the state during the heating process in the boiler that is from 4 to 1, when heat is added till we reach the state 1, but in a superheating systems uh, we say that keep adding heat to the steam and so that we get uh, we reach in a region which is called as a superheated region or this so that means if you say this is liquid plus vapor this is pure liquid and this is only vapor regions and we call this as a superheated vapor. So, through this process once you do this now at the state 1 we expand the steam uh, in the turbine so that we land off the exit condition of the turbine as 2 dash and obviously quality of uh, 2 dash is greater than uh, quality of so, if I say quality of steam at x2 dash is always greater than x2. So, through this process we solve the problems of not getting eroded uh, of the steam turbine blades. Now, coming back to the boiler sides, so the essential or extra arrangement that you do is that we need to have a another unit called as a superheating unit and the boiler and superheating unit combinedly is called as steam generator. So, we look into the steam generator in more details in the subsequent modules. For the time being we just have to understand the steam generator term is nothing but the which includes boiler and superheating systems that supplies necessary heat to the working fluid. So, from subsequent onwards we will now see that only superheated heated cycle can give you a better thermal efficiency. The another uh, part is a reheat cycle. So, ideally speaking reheat cycle and superheat cycle they run in parallel because uh, normally we take the advantage of this uh, reheat because what we do is in the reheat systems is that first if you look at this particular arrangement a reheating system unit. Uh, in a reheating system unit, the expansion process in the turbine is done in two uh, or more phases. So, first phase is called as high pressure turbine, second phase is called as low pressure turbines. So, let us understand uh, how we achieve this. So, once the steam from the boiler at state 1, state 1 stands for uh, at this state superheated region at temperature T1, it enters to the high pressure turbine unit. Now, after uh, the expansion in the high pressure unit, so state goes to 1 to 2. So, the thermodynamic process of expansion or isentropic expansion from 1 to takes place, 1 to 2 takes place in a high pressure turbine. At point 2, the steam is again reheated. So, instead of expanding further, it is reheated and re when it is reheated it uh, goes to the state 3 and this reheating systems happens in the again in same boiler unit. So, uh, but however, 
while doing this re reheating we necessarily do not go to the state point 1 somewhere less than that. So, the state point 3 is T 3 is less than T 1. Now, the state steam at state 3 enters to the low pressure turbine unit and it expands to this low pressure turbine units. So, there are work output happens in H 1 minus H 2 the first part and second part is H 3 minus H 4. So, these two uh, additionally things it, it enhances the work output. So, this is the advantage what we get in a reheating process. So, ideally speaking then from 4 the system goes to 4 to 5 in a condensing unit, 5 to 6 in the pump and again uh, from 6 to 1 it is goes in a boiler. So, this is all about the reheat cycle. Now, there is another concept of called as supercritical reheat cycles. So, what we understand uh, the supercritical um, system is that that uh, for every working fluid or pure substance it has a the thermodynamic diagrams uh, like PV diagram, TS diagram uh, it shows the various uh, states that is for example, in this for steam if you draw the working fluid the state of the working fluid in a TS diagrams we have liquid regions we have liquid plus vapor regions then we have vapor regions. Now, while operating uh, the reheat cycle or normal reheat cycle we really do not go beyond this saturated dome. So, we, we this classical process of uh, going to this is that uh, we the state of the system goes from goes within this liquid vapor regions and that is happens in a constant pressure line. Now, what the supercritical system tells is that you increase the pressure such a way that we cross this critical point. So, that the liquid directly goes to the steams without crossing this liquid vapor regions. That means, the in this boiler arrangement which is or steam generator unit is equipped uh, in a such a way that we create a pressure and such that liquid water goes directly to the steam and that means in that case we have to operate the pressure at which it is above the critical pressures. Now, for water this critical pressure is 22.1 mega Pascals. In other words it means that you retain the pressure in the steam generator which is about 22 mega Pascal or above. Uh, through this if you can do that then from 6 to 1 we can directly reach in a cycle which is called as supercritical cycles and essentially this cycle does not cross the liquid vapor regions. Uh, but these have uh, um, although there are infrastructure difficulties, but they, they are high, uh, higher efficient than the conventional reheat cycles. And for a supercritical cycles, we need to have a combustion process which can be achieved through uh, pulverized coal or coal powder and specialized steam generators. Now, just to give you some brief idea that what advantage we get using a supercritical reheat cycle is that if we use a conventional steam reheat cycle, then maximum efficiency we can achieve is uh, 40 percent with all types of augmentations. But when you think about a supercritical power plants, so we need to say, expect that steam generator should be op should operate more than 20 uh, 22 mega Pascal or above. Now, uh, a close look or close uh, analysis of thermodynamic analysis reveals that a supercritical power plant which operates at 30 MPa and 600 degree centigrade. If you can design this, then we can achieve efficiency up to 6, 47 percent. Now, ultra super uh, critical power plant, they again go beyond such 
pressures like uh, they operate somewhere at about 35 mega Pascal and 700 degree centigrade. For that we can achieve efficiency up to 50 percent. So, except the installation difficulties supercritical power plants have more advantages as compared to the conventional power plants operating through in a reheat cycle. Then we will move on to uh, regenerative cycles. So, we have understood superheat cycle, uh, reheat cycle, then we will move to regenerative cycles. Let us try to understand this reheat cycle. So, before that we have said that we require superheating for the steam to expand in a turbine. So, if you take this as an advantage, then what we can say that during a continuous expansion process in the turbine that is from 1 to 3, we think of tapping some amount of uh, water or some amount of uh, mixer through some process and that is essentially achieved through a open feed water systems. What you typically do is that the turbine stage is designed in two folds, one is stage 1 and second is stage 2. We may think of high pressure stage and stage 2 is a low pressure stage. So, while during this expansion process that means when the steam enters into the turbine at state 1, after certain expansion that is at state point 2 somewhere here, we tap y quantity of uh, mass or liquid or steam. We take suppose from uh, we have one unit of steam which is entering at state 2 we tap y quantity of steam and allow the rest one 1 minus y quantity to expand in the next stage turbine. And then what you do? So, through and in this condenser process also that is from 3 to 4 1 minus y unit that gets condensed. So, it reaches at state point 4. Then from 4 uh, there is a one feed water pump that takes this 1 minus y quantity of liquid uh, saturated liquid at state 4 to state 5 and then you allow it to enter into a open feed water systems. And through this when you allow to enter to the um, feed water systems there it meets y unit of steam. So, thereby additional heating we get from this steam. And again the combined uh, uh, working fluid that is uh, y unit of um, uh, steam which is entering in this line along this line and 1 minus y unit of steam at y unit of liquid water that gets condensed water. It mixes with y unit of uh, steam and the combined system is enters into the boiler at state 7. So, through this process what happens is that your heat in uh, Q in Q in becomes uh, H 1 minus H 7 Q in dot by M dot will be equivalent to H 1 minus H 7. So, in that process what happens your additional load from the boiler is reduced. So, when we have additional load is heat load is reduced, so we have enhanced thermal efficiency of the plant. So, had this process been done without reheating, then from 5 to 1 the uh, boiler would have uh, boiler load would have been uh, bringing the state from 5 to 1. Now, it becomes from only 7 to 1. So, through this process your heat addition into the boiler is reduced. So, this is the advantage that we get in an open feed water systems. So, in practice the operating conditions are such that reduction in heat addition is more than the offsets uh, with respect to decrease in the work output and there is an enhancement in the 
thermal efficiency. So, we will see a brief look into the uh, cycle analysis here our attention is focused to the mass balance equations that happens when you tap this heat in the turbines. Uh, so, we say that at state 1, uh, 1 unit of uh, ma ma 1 kg of steam which enters and at 2 we take out y unit of or y kg of steam and rest of the steams 1 minus y it is allowed to expand in the second stage turbine. Then uh, subsequently 1 minus y goes into the condensing unit and ultimately at state 6 both the fluids mixes and that goes to the state 7. If you can do this mass and energy balance we can write it uh, for uh, this uh, mass balance that is m 2 plus m 3 is equal to m 1. So, st state 3 is somewhere here state 2 is this and so m 3 is 1 minus y. So, through this we can find out actually what is y how much y we are going to get. Now, uh, if you can take a close look of this feed water systems this energy rate balance we can frame and through this process we can find out what is the value of y. Then through uh, subsequently in the same procedure we can get turbine work, pump work, q in, q out. Now, there is a another method if you look at uh, this uh, open water feed water system uh, actually there are two pumps that is pump 1, pump 2 and pump 1 stands for condensing 1 minus y unit of steam and whereas, pump 2 stands for entirely pumping entire unit of uh, the mass that enters at state 6 and it takes these things from this uh, pressure at 6 to the boiler pressure. So, but here in an closed feed water systems the main uh, intention was that steam uh, is not allowed to mix. So, what it means is that the y unit of steam that comes at state 2 and it does not mix with the condensate that comes at state 5. That means, we are only tapping the heat of the steam not the mass which is gets mixed. So, there is no mixing is allowed in this closed feed water systems. So, thermodynamically if you look at this diagram we start with state 1 at state 2 we take out y unit of steam remaining 1 minus y unit uh, expands in the low pressure turbine. Now, when you are at state 3 at state 3 we um, uh, condensate this 1 minus y unit through this condensate line. Then what happens to the rest y at state 7 that means, after the, uh, the y unit of uh, steam enters the saturated liquid we use a trap system. So, that only traps the vapor. So, thereby the condensate or liquid state comes at somewhere in the state 8. So, entire uh, fluid mix at 8 and then again it goes to the state 4 and the state 4 is nothing but in the condensing unit and uh, from then entire process is repeated and the we get the state 5 as at the exit of the closed feed water systems. And then in this closed feed water systems then from 5 to 6 and 6 to 1 is the heat addition process. So, uh, additionally what advantage we get here there is no extra additional pump. So, only one pump which is actually used in the conventional power plant uh, that is sufficient to run this type of system. So, this is all about uh, uh, three important uh, cycles uh, reheat, superheat uh, and regenerative cycles. So, uh, some of the advantages of this re reheat cycle I can say 
is that reheats gives additional benefit of getting more power output and improving the quality of the steam. And again regenerative cycle uh, reduces the heat load in the steam generator and thereby cycle efficiency gets improved. Some of the power plants can operate in both modes like reheat and regenerative modes to get enhancement in both power output and efficiency. And with respect to the closed feed water systems, there are some advantages in this closed feed water system which says is that there is no extra pumping requirement. So, with this I completed this part. Now, uh, at the end of this lecture, we will try to solve a numerical problem. So, this numerical problem is based on a Rankine cycle that uh, operates with reheat and superheat. Reheat and superheat I mean the we have to draw the thermodynamic cycles which means that we are operating the steam in the superheated regions and at the same time we have we need to take the advantage of reheat. So, the problem that gives us is that uh, uh, the steam enters the first stage of turbine at 8 mega Pascal and 480 degree centigrade it expands to 0.7 mega Pascal. So, let me redraw the thermodynamic cycle. So, in a T s diagram we first define the states So, so, we have the first pressure line which is the highest pressure line which is 8 mega Pascal. Second one is second pressure line where reheating is done 0.7 mega Pascal and third one is condenser pressure line that is 0 0.008 mega Pascal. So, we are at state 1 that state 1 is 8 mega Pascal 480 degree centigrade. Then after expanding to 0.7 mega Pascal it is reheated to 440 degree centigrade. So, that means we are somewhere at state 3 which is 440 degree centigrade and state 1 is 480 degree centigrade. The net power uh, output of the cycle is 90 megawatt. So, we get 90 megawatt as power output from the cycles. The each turbines operate with 88 percent efficiency. So, turbine efficiency is 88 percent. So, this makes us uh, aware that the state 2 uh, is uh, as to take into account of the uh, isentropic efficiency for the turbine. So, for that region uh, we uh, this is a reversible process irreversible process. So, state 2 will be somewhere here and had it been the isentropic process corresponding point would have been 2 s. Similarly, state 3 isentropic process and 4 would be an irreversible process and 4 s is 3 4 s is isentropic process and 3 4 is irreversible process. So, point 4 is located. Then uh, from 4 to 4 1 it the goes into the condenser and it reaches to 
state 5. Then at 5 there is a pump that takes this, uh, uh, this saturated liquid to a boiler pressure and then from 6 to 1 it goes through this manner. Okay. So, this is your heat addition process Q in 2 un W T 1 this that is power recovery process W T 2 and heat rejection process we say Q dot out and this is W dot P. So, we have to individually calculate all these numbers. So, this problem is nothing but we have to revisit the steam table and once you draw this uh, cycle diagrams it is possible to note down all the thermodynamic states from the steam table. Now, let us see at the superheated steam table at 8 mega Pascal and 480 degree centigrade we have H1 is 3, 3, 4, 8.4 kilojoule per kg and we also require isentropic uh, entropy value that is S1 that is 6.66 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Then from uh, 1 to either you have to go 2S and 2. So, state 2 and 2s how do you calculate now state 2 and 2 uh, 2s what we know is they are they are at 0.7 mega pascal and t3 is 440 degree centigrade so this point is also located so we can find out uh, uh, at this state uh, uh, things we have data sf as um, entropy value in the uh, saturated liquid state 1.992 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. These values we can uh, get from this steam table data. So, we have ent uh, entropy at saturated vapor state that is 6.708 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Again we have H f is equal to 697.22 that is enthalpy value kilojoule per kg and H f g is equal to 2066.3 kilojoule per kg. So, we have all the data right now here. What we can now find out uh, what is X 2 S? X 2 S can be found out because entropy uh, that is H1 uh, S1 is equal to S2S. So, from these uh, things we can calculate X2S as S2S minus SF divided by SG minus SF. All these numbers are there uh, we can find out x 2 s as 0 0.9895. Then we can we have the x 2 s then we can find out h 2 s is equal to h f plus x 2 s into H G minus H F. So, knowing all these numbers or inserting all these numbers, we arrive at this enthalpy uh, at state 2 S as 2741.8 kilojoule per kg. Now, to get back the information of state 2, we have to rely on isentropic efficiency of the turbine. So, let us go to the basic definition what is isentropic efficiency for the turbine and in this case it is H 2 minus H 1 divided by H 2 S minus H 1. 
So, that is equal to 0.88. So, you know all these numbers. Uh, so, we can say H2 is equal to H1 plus 0 0.88 into H2S minus H1. So, this value we can get as H2 is equal to 2814.6 kilojoule per kg. So, we know the state 2 and 2S. Then we will have to move to state 3. So, state 3 is nothing but the entry stage of the low pressure uh, unit of the turbine. So, for that what data we know is that P 3 0 0.7 mega Pascal and T 3 as 440 degree centigrade. So, this is a superheated region. So, superheated steam table will implies super, you have to rely on the data from the superheated steam table at 0.7 mega Pascal and 440 degree centigrade. So, this will give you H3 as 3353.3 kilo joule per kg and S3 is equal to 7.757 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, you have to repeat the same process for state 4S and 4. Because they, those are expansion process. So, P4 we already know it is condenser pressure it is 0 0.008 mega Pascal. S 4 S is equal to S 3. So, this will give you S 4 S X 4 S is equal to S 4 S minus S F S 3 sorry S G minus S F. Now, at this pressures we have this data SF is equal to 0 0.5926 kilo joule per kg Kelvin, SG is equal to 8.2287 kilo joule per kg Kelvin, HF is equal to 173.88 kilo joule per kg HFG is equal to 2403.1 kilo joule per kg. So, putting inserting this number of uh, number for SF and SG we get X 4 S as 0 0.9392 which clearly says that the exit state is more than 90 percent. So, this this advantage we get through this reheat and superheat and similarly we can find out H, uh, H4S that is HF plus X4S into HG minus HF. Inserting these numbers we arrive at H4S is equal to 2428.5 kilo joule per kg. So, we know this efficiency for low pressure turbine as 0.88. So, write down that equations H3 minus H4 divided by H3 minus H4S that is 0.88. So, we have 4S H3 and from this equation we can get H 4 as 
kilo joule per kg. So, we have all the state uh, three uh, we know the uh, state condition of three four s and four then we are left with five and six conditions and that is nothing but the for the pump and the pump operates uh, at a con uh, I mean you have to find out the saturated uh, liquid state for the pump which is operating at 0.8 mega Pascal uh, from condenser pressure to the boiler pressure of 8 mega Pascal. To do that we need to revisit data for uh, saturated liquid at 0 0.008 mega Pascal. So, we have H 5 is equal to 173.88 kilo joule per kg. Then uh, at that point we have specific volume it is 1.0084 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter cube per kg. Then we can use the pump equation as H 6 is equal to H 5 plus B 5 into P 6 minus P 1. So, we have P 6 uh, 8 mega Pascal P 1 P 6 sorry P 6 is uh, 0 0.008 mega Pascal P 1 is 8 mega Pascal. So, knowing this number we have H 6 as 181.94 kilo joule per kg. So, we have uh, till this point of time we have all the data of for this uh, or the thermodynamic states. Then we have to relook into the part by part uh, analysis. First one is thermal efficiency, mass flow rate of steam, heat transfer uh, into the working fluid, into the boiler and condenser. So, the let us see what is the thermal efficiency and that is nothing but W net by Q in and that W net is W dot T 1 plus W dot T 2 minus W dot P divided by Q in and that is if you write down each of the term turbine work two parts for the first state turbine it is H 1 minus H 2 for the second stress turbine it is H 3 minus H 4 for pump work it is H 6 minus H 5 heat addition process goes in two parts one is H 1 minus H 6 second part is for he for reheating that is H 3 minus H 2 and all the numbers are uh, we have evaluated and this uh, part uh, we rewrite as 1339.6 divided by 3705.2. So, this part goes as a W net, this part goes as Q in and efficiency is about 36.15 second part is mass flow rate of steam. So, for mass flow rate of steam uh, we have uh, we know that net power is 90 megawatt. So, cycle work is equal to m dot into w dot net that is equal to 90 into 10 to the power 3. So, w dot net is 1339.6. So, this will give you m dot as 67.2 kg per second or approximately 
2.4 into 10 to the power 5 kg per hour. Now, heat uh, transfer into the working fluid in the boiler. So, we say Q in which is boiler, they have two parts one is conventional uh, this is um, um, from taking from 6 to 1 other is from 2, 2 to 3 that is reheat section that is m dot into h1 minus h6 plus h3 minus h2. So, this number is there in the denominator. So, we know m dot that is 67.2 into uh, uh, we, we know this number 67.2 and this number we have already found out. So, 67.2 into 3705.2. So, this is 2489871. Kilo joule per second, or it is approximately 249 megawatt. And similarly, Q dot out, which is in the condenser, that is nothing but M dot into H4 minus H5. So this is uh, this is uh, 67.2. H4 minus H5 is already evaluated that is 2539.5 minus 173.88. So, this number is 158970 kilo joule per second or approximately 159 megawatt. So, a summary that we can make out is that we have supplied 249 megawatt of energy to produce the work of 90 megawatt and in this heat rejection process we have rejected 159 megawatt. So, this process leads to overall efficiency of about 36 percent. So, this is a realistic scenario for a steam power plant that operates with reheat and superheat mechanism. So, with this I conclude thank you for your attention.